almost a monster. We live in a world where, although we have technology that could send machines flying out into space, we have turned it almost upon ourselves so that we've actually bored a hole in the curtain of the earth. We actually have a hole in the Arctic produced by our technology. We have seas where fish cannot even breathe. We have worlds of men where just to see their color, a color which is natural to the very ecology of the world. I mean, colors, have, colors of man have nothing to do with anything except responses to environment. And these things have become barriers to even being human. When you look at these things, you become aware of something else in the Egyptian. It wasn't just this technology. It wasn't just this technology. Let me close by saying it wasn't this, that. It was a different spirit. The Egyptian was taught, for example, to show pity and compassion to his brother. He was taught to share things with the hungry and the thirsty. He was taught to, to, to see the, the absolute value of justice and equality. Do you know they had state-supported medicine in that time among the early Egyptians? You didn't have to pay. It wasn't your wealth that determined your medical treatment. Do you know that a worker, a worker could sue a minister in the early Egyptian world? Do you know women were equal to men then? So that... <clears throat> So that not only did they build a different universe of science, in their medicine, in their mathematics, in their time structures, but they built a different moral structure. They gave us the day, the 24-hour day is African. You take it for granted there is no such thing as a 24-hour day. On the moon, it's different. In the Arctic, it's different. In winter, it's different. In summer, it's different. In the tropics, it's different. There's no 24-hour day. The Africans made that because they knew with an exactness how long it took for the sun to move in certain directions. The Africans knew when they brought it in their metaphysics and in their sciences. They knew the second of time. They created the second of time. We take it for granted. That second is African. They created the second of art. They gave it to the world. They were the first to talk of ecliptics. They created those things. They created geometry along the Nile. They said their arithmetic was inferior, that it was just trial and error until they tested it in 1967 in a big computer. The scientists discovered in this country testing early African arithmetic that of 22,295 possible decompositions, the early Africans in Egypt had chosen the 46th most elegant, which is what the computer would have chosen 4,000 years later. Therefore, let me close, because the time has come when I do have to close. There is so much more to say. Let me close by saying, as Cesare, at the height of the Negritude movement said, when he was accused of merely saying all this and reacting in this way out of hatred and envy of the white. It is not out of hatred or envy of any race that I proclaim the greatness of my own. It is because I know that no race has a monopoly of intelligence, invention, or genius. It is because I know, too, that the race of man is far from finished. There is a lot to do in the world. The race of man is only just beginning, and there is room for all of us at the rendezvous of history. Thank you.